In this video, we're gonna set up the Korg Nano Control 2 as a door transport and MIDI CC controller. So the reason I'm making this video is because it took me a lot longer than it should have to get this sorted. Um, I'm currently using Cubase 10, um, and I had a few issues where I would get the transport to work, but I couldn't get the MIDI CC data to work. There was other times that I could get some of the MIDI CC data, such as modulation, but I couldn't get anything like expression uh, or volume or vibrato, anything like that to work either. Um, and there's a few little mistakes that you can make that mess up the whole thing. So there are a couple of tutorials online of how to do this, um, but they tend to omit some of the key points that you need to get this fully functioning. So if you follow the steps in this video, you should have full control of the Nano controller as a control surface for both transport controls and MIDI CC data. So with that, let's get on with it. So in order to make this work, there's two things that you need. Um, the first being the uh, driver in order to make your computer talk to the device. You may find that you don't actually need to install this at all, but it's well worth making sure you have the latest version. So when you come to the uh, Korg website, there is a driver for both Mac and Windows there. Uh, I'm using Windows 10 for this. Um, the second piece that you, you need is the Korg Control Editor. So again, here the latest release is 1.7 and that's available in both Windows and Mac. So once you've downloaded them, uh, get them installed and then we can start to actually configure the Nano Control 2 uh, to your door. At this point, you should have your drivers and the Korg Editor installed. Now. When you go to plug in the Nano Control 2, you may find that the uh, Korg editor won't recognize it. So to solve this issue, you need to make sure that you have uh, held down the cycle and the set button while plugging the uh, Nano Control 2 in. So if you do have this issue, unplug it, uh, press down on cycle and set at the same time and hold them, and then plug in the uh, USB port into the side of it. Um, just wait um, a couple of seconds, I don't know the actual official time. Once that's done, uh, let go of the buttons. You won't actually see any lights or anything like that at all. Once that's done, then open up the Korg editor and you should see uh, your device there. Once you have all your software installed and you are able to see your Nano Control 2, you want to select it in the target device panel and click OK. This will then bring up a visual display of the Nano Control 2. Uh, you may find that yours looks slightly different to mine in terms of what is in each of these boxes. Now, much of mine are blank, and that's simply because I don't need to use them. I'm simply using transport and the first four faders and the last fader. So you can adjust these to whatever you want them to be. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but I'm simply using CC11 for expression, uh, which is essentially just volume control within orchestral sample libraries. CC1 for dynamics, um, which is essentially, uh, sorry, for modulation, which controls the dynamics of the instruments that I use. CC21 controls vib uh, vibrato in the sample libraries that I use, and CC16 is the speed between legato patches. Um, finally, the last fader all the way at the end, CC seven controls the volume per uh, patch uh, within the contact library itself. So it's like a, a master volume uh, for contact. So if you want to change these, let's say I want to add one here, I simply select, this is fader five, I select it, I can enable it, and then I simply select or type in the number or I can dial it up and down. So it really depends what you want that CC data to control that should be unique uh, to your you know, to your needs. Um, let me just disable that real quick. Okay, so this is mine set up. Now, here's where I was going wrong. I was simply hitting save. Um, that 
isn't really what you need to do. What you need to do is go to uh, Write Scene Data. Once you click that, that will bind those commands to the actual nano control itself. So do that, and that will, you know, that's then your controls set onto the nano control. And then really the rest of the work is all done in your choice of door. So now you have your control two set up in the uh, control editor. You wanna open up your door. Um, I'm using Cubase 10 here. Um, and you wanna to go to your kind of MIDI setup. So here, this shows me all the different MIDI ins and outs. Um, so I have my uh, Mbox, my complete control for my S88 keyboard, uh, Sapphire Pro 40, so on and so forth. And we can see here the Nano Control 2. So you want to make sure that is active. Once you've confirmed that, you then want to uh, create a uh, remote device. So in Cubase 10, we hit the Add button and you'll see there's a bunch of control surfaces here of which the control 2 is not listed. So we create a generic remote for this. So once you've done that, so you can see here I've created generic remote 2, the MIDI input, you would select for what you want it to be. Um, then what you want to do, this is really for us to set up the transport control, um, is you, you want to start to uh, map these out. So over here, you can see this uh, learn button. So I am going to first hit apply because one thing I did find was when I hit learn and I start to try and uh, map these buttons out, it wouldn't uh, automatically recognize them because I simply, once I selected nano control two, I had to hit apply first. So uh, what I'm going to do now, we'll press learn. Um, and this first one is going to be the rewind button. So I'll push the rewind. You can see the address has changed. Second one is fast forward. Third one, stop. Fourth one, play. And fifth one, record. Now, the reason you can see this all happening right now is because I already have this mapped in. Oh, I already have this mapped in on the first one, so it's already controlling it. Let me just stop there. Um, so, with these maps, you also want to give these a name. So this is uh, rewind forward stop play and record. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is down in the second section. Um, you can see these are all now changing because I've mapped them in. Okay, so what you want to do here um, is click on device, change that to transport because it's a transport function. Um, we then need to click on device and the value. So this is saying, okay, we're calling rewind. Oh, it's going to affect something on the transport. Um, the category is device just because that's default and then we need to give it a value or action. So rewind, we want it to rewind. Um, forward, again, transport, device, this will be forward. Uh, same, and you just fill in exactly what it is you need. Um, so what this means is you can map these keys to do anything. So if I wanted the play button to map to say, uh, I don't know uh, what's available, um, you know, a, a pre-roll or cycle, um, then you can do it and, you know, you'll hit the play button and it will do what it is you've asked it to do. Um, so that could be useful. It really depends on, on what you're uh, using it for. Um, so let me finish mapping these out, transport device, and this last one, uh, what's this record? So uh, if you can't find it, just type it in at least for Cubase anyway. And that's you all set up. We hit apply, you're good to go. Um, I'm actually gonna delete this one out um, just because 
you know, I'm, I, I already have it set up here. So let me, uh, let's just not connect. There we go. I'll try that. There we go. Okay. So transport buttons, let me just get rid of this transport buttons. Okay. So I'm hitting stop there. I hit play. Um, in Cubase, you would, you know, you take the space bar for it to start. Um, if you pressed it again, it would stop. You push it again, it would start again. Um, but I like going back to the start, which you use the period full stop on the numerical keypad that takes you back. Enter, commit, you go, and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much similar across all the different doors. So what I've got now is when I hit play, and then I hit stop, if I hit stop again, it will take me back to the previous position. Um, fast forward, there we go, rewind, and then record. So that all works, that's great. And then lastly, what we wanna do is make sure the uh, CC data works for MIDI. So we've got our transport control set up now. Last thing is to make sure that we can um, you know, make sure that the mapping that we did in the control editor around, uh, you know, which CC data affects what actually works within our door. So let's do that now. Okay, so I have a uh, instrument, virtual instrument here, which is contact. And then I also have uh, one uh, MIDI track here. So I've mapped this to channel one of contact which is here. Um, so here's the um, controls that I was talking about. So we've got dynamics, vibrato, speed, expression, and then the overall volume. So we can see if we right click on dynamics, you can say that it's currently mapped to CC1, vibrato is 21, speed is 16, expression is 11. Uh, and uh, you know you can within contact you can map controls totally. Um, cost, you you can totally customize the CC mapping within uh, contact. But what I want is to make sure that I don't have to come in and do that every single time I start up a session. So I just want a kind of generic overall that fader does that CC data all the time. So we mapped the first fader to expression, and you can see there. I'm, you can't see, you know, I'm moving my finger on the nano control and it's moving up and down. Dynamics, there we go. Vibrato was the third fader and speed was the fourth. And if you remember the eighth fader, the very last one was the overall volume. And there you go. You can see that's moving as well. So I can now uh, independently, you know, you've got four fingers so you can do all these independently, which is really cool. Um, and that's pretty much it. So this should now be fully working in your door. If you have any comments or suggestions for other content, please leave them in the comment section. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please consider subscribing. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching.